who are sitting there watching our video right now, what do you think is making you see us, hear us, and understand us? The answer is simple, your brain. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Here is the index of our subjects. General use and different parts of the brain presentation. Presentation of function of each part. How are knowledge transmitted to the brain? Explaining process. Evolution of the brain. And an experiment. Our brain is used for everything we do. It's used for our senses, for our dreaming, for our thoughts, for our creativity, for everything. It's used all the time, even when we're sleeping. We couldn't live without our brain, because that's what makes us think of breathing. If we didn't have our brains, we wouldn't be with here, we wouldn't be what we are. And even to think of that, you need your brain. We may think that our brain works as one, but actually it is composed of different frontal lobes. These are called the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, occipital lobe, and the cerebrum, and also the brain stem. Each part has its own function, but the function eventually can be linked. These are all the perspectives of the brain. The lateral view, the sagittal view, the superior view, the inferior view. Yes, each, each part has its own function. Frontal lobe, here. 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 And here. Is the part which contains most various symptoms. It's used. One, motor function, movement control, Two, for problem solving memory, also for our impulse control, initiations, all our judgments, and our social behavior. This all counts in the high mental function area. Here, 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 and here. And language and speech. That's the broadcast area. Then, right here, here, here is the parietal lobe. It is mainly used for its sensory and perception. It contains the somatosensory here, here, which is for feeling pain or all sorts of feelings physically. It also has the auditory area here, here and the language developing area, here, here, called the word mix area. Moving on, the occipital lobe is situated here, 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 and here. The occipital lobe controls mostly the visual process of humans. The temporal lobe, here, and here, is involved in primary auditory perception and holds the primary auditory cortex. It receives information from our ears, and the secondary areas perceive the information into our speech and words, making us able to respond to things. Lastly, it has a cerebrum here, here, and here. Then it puts these inputs together and integrates them into motor activity. Oh, and if you look here, you can see the motion area connected to all these zones. Oh. All right, we've seen all the functions now. Wait. There's one more thing they should know. You see, your brain sometimes plays tricks on you. Sounds scary? Well, it isn't really. This year, we have learned the way light travels into our eyes. For example, here is an apple. From the angle light travels, we should see the apple upside down, like this. Yet, our intelligent brain knows what the apple should really look like. So, it puts that knowledge into our eyes and makes us see rightly. Not to 
optical illusion is when our brain tricks us into seeing something that is logical as something that is not logical. For example, when you see an image that is totally wrong, that shouldn't exist, it shouldn't be right. Like when you have an image of a cube and there is no right side left and dark side, your brain will think that there is one and make you see one when there is none. And also for these lines, your brain will make you think that the ones without the little exit signs are longer, but actually they're the same size. Have you ever wondered about how information comes to your brain? Well, this is the answer. Very simple. It's your nerves. Your nerves, when they touch something really boiling hot, for example, they'll emit an electric wave which will come to your brain as information. But it won't be like a sound. It won't be like, oh my god, it hurts. Ow! It'll be like a little wave which will come to your brain and then your brain will think, oh, that hurts. And then you'll say, ow. But that's why there's a little reaction time between when you're burned and you actually say it. Because you need the time for the wave to come to your brain and your brain to think and then you to react and say, ow, it hurts. And so at that point, the people have actually taken their foot off you or you've put your finger off the fire, for example. The history of human brain shows firstly a gradually bigger brain relative to the body size from early primates to humans and finally to Homo sapiens. Human brain size has been trending upwards since two million of years ago and f with a three factors increases. Early Australopithecine brains were a little larger than chimpanzee ones. We can see the growth when the human brain volume gets larger as we progress along the, evol the evolution of humans. The increase started from about 610 meters squared in Homo habilis up to 1887 meters squared in Homo sapiens, which is the hominid with the biggest brain size. Increase in brain size topped with Neanderthals since the average brain size been shrinking over the past 28,000 years. Male brain has decreased from 1.5 thousand centimeter squares to 1.35 thousand centimeter squares, uh, while female brain has shrunk from the same relative proportion. An other essential element in brain evolution in humans is rearrangement. Larger brains need more connection, but more connections can become less efficient. So the brain has recognized for efficiency. Also, the average body size of Neanderthals was larger, which led to a bigger size of brain. Next, we will be showing you a video of us dissecting a brain and some pictures. So if you can't stand the sense of blood, or if you're scared of anything like that, you don't have to watch it, don't worry. Just telling you. And even if you don't watch it, don't forget to like the video. Welcome, Welcome back. back. Uh, now we're gonna dissect the brain. Um, we're gonna open first this side, okay? And then we're gonna open this way.
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel.